Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Mix and Mash Monday Street Fighter V Battle Lounges. We are doing our usual Mix and Mash variation thing today, where we will be floating around between the lounges of various team members. So rather than looking for me, Kanzuki Dynasty, CFN Rune Siren, you're going to be looking for all of the other members of our team that you normally see in our lounges. In this case, we are starting out with DeWolf, but I will drift around between the team's lounges on the stream as time goes on. So, without further ado, let's go! Let's do it. The team is all, for the most part, this week and technically recently, um, at our own individual plateaus. If you've ever played a game like this, tried to build a skill like this, I'm sure you have also encountered these plateaus where you've been going up for a while and then you hit that spot where you have to learn something new or get something down, and it's going to take you a while to get anywhere. I'm at my own one of these, of course, but lots of team members have their own varieties. The reason that this happens, at least in my case, but really a common reason for this to happen, is that, um... is simply that you get to a point where you've got something to learn, some skill to build, and it's not going to pay off towards the end. And oftentimes this is, as it currently is for me, that you need to learn some different way of thinking about the game as a whole. Fighting games have a lot of these. And so that's today's theme. You'll get some of me yammering about my plateau, plateaus in general, a little bit of information on the rest of the team's statuses, as relayed by yours truly, and some general ranting related to the above matters. If that's not your style, feel free to ignore me and watch anyway, or to skip on to a different stream if you happen to be watching on our YouTube or Twitch archives. Today we're on a plateau, and you gotta cross the plateau before you can keep climbing. Round one. Fight! For myself, I've gotten over various things lately. Well, where lately is a few months or so. Getting through them obviously isn't instant, nor is getting acclimated, having them stick, the 100% and all of that. But overall, I've gotten through such things as managing to find my calm. Managing to accept not going in full throttle at things.
learning to change my state, manage my state, manage my tension, all sorts of things that we've talked about on various other streams that I'm not really going to go too deep into again. Because, obviously, that's not where I'm at right now. So, it's plateau time. I've gotten to the point where I need to change my concept of what the game is like and how it's played. Or, at least, how I'm going to play it. And for me, that's a matter of learning offense, sort of. You lose. Footsies, sort of. You know, all the usual things, really. But I have to get to the point where I gain another level of how I view the game. Our stream today is titled Allegory of the Cave, and if you think about it a bit, that's sort of what this type of thing is. I have a particular sort of flat way of viewing the game in a particular manner, and I'm trying to step forward into reality. And that's not always going to be straightforward or easy. Because it's not a matter of grinding a thing, learning this particular cancel, this whatever it may be, this spacing. It's a matter of learning a new way to think about and process things. In my case, it's time to think finally properly about whose turn it is. And so I'm going to put a little bit of my focus back into the round before I get on to that. Round two. Point. So, learning whose turn it is. Straightforward, right? If you're in bronze, early silver, whose turn it is is defined by the frame data. Nice and simple. Straightforward. It's my turn because I'm plus, or because I have pressure going, maybe even because I got some good frame traps going on, or because it's my mix-up. Or it's my opponent's turn for really the mirror of any of those reasons. It's straightforward. But that's not how it works. And if you spend enough time studying fighting games, you'll learn over time that that's only the first very most basic level of how it works. It's not wrong, but it's not right either. It's one-dimensional. You only see the shadows on the cave wall. And so, that's where I'm at. Trying to see the objects not only in shadows, or even as shadows, because the first step is obviously recognizing that what you see isn't the whole thing. What you're used to thinking about isn't the whole thing. What you're used to reacting to isn't the whole thing. And then begins the much harder and longer journey of going up to actually managing to see beyond the shadows. See the 3D world that is projecting them. For me, my next step on this journey is going from manipulating spacing, responding to what my opponent is doing, a little bit of this here and there, Round but one. For the most part, things like, if my opponent is being defensive, using my buttons, hitting some block strings, pressuring them a bit, 
but ultimately not really necessarily opening them. And I could try to go ham, I could do weirder things, more, well, a lot of things to deal with that situation, but at the end of the day, ways around the problem don't solve it. You need to learn to see things for how they are, learn to see things for the next layer of what's going on. And for me, that's learning, going from learning when I should expect it is my turn based on just what the game tells me, to thinking about when my opponent thinks it's their turn. Because at the end of the day, it can be as much their turn as they want, but if you can keep them from realizing it, you get to keep going with whatever it is that you intend to do. And it can be your turn, as hard as you want. But unless you can convince your opponent that it's not, it's gonna be harder to do damage. The ideal goal of any fighting game player is, well, to convince their opponent to do something stupid. Take a turn that's not theirs, make that YOLO and die, whatever it's gonna be. And so the next step for that for me is learning to think about when my opponent thinks it's their turn. So I know when I can act, when I don't need to act, and everything in between. Round one. Fight. One hit. In any case, a break to talk about someone else. Shiro does not have a Hondabot duo, that is. So he has not had the practice with all that, getting used to this character as much. And this is obviously then uh, something he's a bit less experienced at. This character has some tricky jumps and he doesn't have necessarily the same types of frame traps in neutral as others. So, suggestions for DeWolf would be to jump forward out of his pressure if he thinks it's going to stop for a moment, because he'll lose charge if you cross over him, and block until V-reversal when you don't think he'll stop. On the other side, if our 46th president is interested in getting better at this particular matchup, for him it is about getting around Nikali and finding the grand grab moment, and otherwise more or less playing solid defense.
final round. So far we've got that solid defense thing going on. There it is. So anyway, back on to my uh, prayer rent. I am following that path, stepping up the ladders, trying to catch glimpses of what lies beyond. And it's uh, sort of a long road. I don't know how long it is yet, because I'm not there. But I expect it will be a while. There's so much to knowing when your opponent thinks it's their turn in a fighting game. Some opponents will basically always assume it's their turn. Others can be easily discouraged into thinking it's never their turn. And then there's more still for whom, well, it varies. And, sorry about that. My audio config was not quite correct. Anyway, stream should be back to normal now. And it's that variation that matters for everything. Probably not a round in which I want to be using that V-Trigger specifically, but I suppose it worked out in this case. Not that I would want the other V-Trigger, just that I would want my V-Reversal. So step one for me is learning to recognize when my opponents think it's their turn, tend to think it's their turn, the sorts of situations that change their mind, watch for when their breathing or flow shifts, and everything like that. And that on its own is quite a bit. And for Honda, I have to basically relearn all of that. When it is my turn, when it is not my turn, and when my opponent will think it is. And that's a lot of work. Basically what it means is my habits, my expectations, are not going to serve me particularly well. Or at least not necessarily. So this is, in a way, a good matchup for this particular plateau, goal, day, whatever the case may be. In that it forces me to do basically the thing that I need to train to do.
And you can see that in every bit of movement Honda makes. Although, I have no idea how easy it is to see for people other than me in this case. But it feels to me like every vector, every movement, timing, whatever he takes is something I'm not used to. And I have trouble with this character, in part for this reason. Obviously, as you all may note today, I am the one on the mic. It is not really in. And so, we are not... Well, I am not currently benefiting as much as I might generally have been from her wonderful advice. Which means, to some extent, I have to figure this out on my own. Even if she can give me a little bit of hint in between sets or things like that. Which is sensible enough in the end, really. When you consider particularly that in the end it's something I sort of have to get a feel for myself. And gain some foundation for. And she can obviously give me the basics of the matchup, notice or point out things that I've been missing as a whole. But at the end of the day, experience is experience. And when it's a matter of learning to see or understand something, being given the answers, it only helps to a very specific extent. Now, in between rounds, well, for me, anyway, DeWolf gets a bit more of her advice in that I am able to relay some of it. Such as what you obviously heard last round. I've had the ability to talk in a side channel about the matchup somewhat in the meantime.
Wolf and the President seem to have found their flows for the most part. So I obviously have a little experience with Mr. President here on his other characters. Some G, some Seth, things like that. But less, not none, but less experience with him on Honda. So I know when I press things like that button that I'm going to get punished. But I don't necessarily have a full idea of how to expect this character to flow, so it's a little different from what I'm accustomed to, even though our matches sometimes go very similarly to this sort of thing overall when he is playing G. Which makes my challenge for the day basically the same thing just described. 
When exactly does he think it's his turn? And maybe somewhat, although it's also partially the next level. What can I do to change that? Or trick him in one way or another? And figuring this out is helpful to me as well, honestly, because not only do I have the ability to know when to expect him to move, maybe be able to take advantage of that, but even beyond that, I have the ability to know when I maybe don't need to move. If it's technically his turn, or we're in neutral, it's either of us could do something. If I happen to be confident that my opponent does not feel like it's their turn or isn't likely to be confident in taking their turn at that particular moment, I get to relax. I don't have to move or try and take every opportunity. I can take advantage of the downtime that that understanding gets me. And not just the downtime enforced by the game or by plus minus, long moves, things like that, but that created for me by a player. I'm a little ways away from it still. The other problem, of course, in this whole concept being that I haven't learned the techniques for this yet. I'm starting from the ground up without much foundation. Trying to build those foundations that I can bring here and elsewhere. But that's what results in a plateau. Or perhaps that's what a plateau is, by nature.
As far as this match is concerned, however, Honda can have trouble with Seku without Honda guessing pretty hard, but only if Seku already has a life lead. Honda's best option is to use different speeds of headbutt and to use the V-Skill to hide the charge and advance. The V-Skill 2 is a bit more of a handicap in this matchup, even Round considering one. its effect. Fight. Not that I personally remember what that is, but it really assures me of these things. As noted, I will be relaying some of her analysis as time goes on. And so you all don't have to listen to me and my ramblings exclusively. Particularly the you that is Mr. President, perhaps Grandpa Shiz, or DeWolf and whoever else may be watching our stream. And playing at the same time. Or later, you know. This all relies somewhat on the fact that Heavy Headbutt is a good anti-air, and unlike most characters that get hit when they fail their Zeku anti-airs in a troublesome way, a Honda will air reset or get out of the way if he tried to anti-air with a Heavy Headbutt a bit too early. As for me, and the plateau saga of my allegory of the cave with learning when my opponent thinks it's their turn. Something I've been reminded of that is useful in this regard, or perhaps related to this, is to stop and check your meters from time to time, 
in part because this will make your rhythm a little more unpredictable, just having a sort of unpredictable pause in there can do a lot towards making you, uh, well, less predictable in the ways that matter for, well, sort of not having the sense that I'm trying to build up, but also as a result for creating situations that are more varied and will give me more opportunities to learn from them. Obviously, if my opponent knows exactly what to expect from me the whole time, they'll have the opportunity to make my life difficult in this a similar way. Obviously, knowing your meters is useful in a variety of other ways as well. The same sort of thing can also give you a bit of a mental break as well, which is useful for its own reasons. Final round. Clear to that, that Mujin was not intentional. Knowing when your opponent is going to consider it to be their turn and keep moving is also very useful for that sort of thing. They're minus. Or at least, I think they're minus. But it's time for your EXTP anyway.
in the end, the trick is to be non-binary about it. The more things you're binary about in fighting games, the more things your opponent can take advantage of. Because at the end of the day, it's mind games. Unless you're playing the most broken, broken of get fighting games, you've got to trick your player out, your opponent player, or set up situations they can't win in. There's all sorts of ways of doing that. Varies by game, varies by character, in all sorts of lovely ways. But at the end of the day, that's mostly what you're trying to do. That sequence was not quite planned, but well expected at every stage, for basically the same reason. I had, for at least that short period of time, a very clear idea of when DeWolf would consider it his turn, what sorts of things he would respond to by thinking, oh, I should do something, or even just by habit, versus not, and basically just getting a chain of them in a row. And obviously, being right. Being right always helps. Unfortunately, most of us cannot do that all the time. So, we train. On the other side, I have a feeling that I at least know well, surely many of you do as well, it can really suck to be going on a roll or being in a situation where you're used to keep continuing attacking, you either have felt like it's safe to for a little while, have had your opponent on the defensive, even if you've been right for a little while. A little while isn't forever, and it's uh, easy sometimes to get too much on a roll. And regret it the moment you hit the button. Know, you're com know you've got it coming, but you can't stop your body, your stop your fingers, stop your brain from going, button. And, uh, just out you go. Alright, Zeku. I have practiced with Zeku Bot a little bit, sort of recently, but not necessarily a ton. Well, lately, anyway. So I have some ideas what to do here, but probably can be easily tricked in the ways that we were just discussing. Well, that is the whole point. So we'll get to see a first-hand example of me on the losing side of this, depending on the type of Zeku I'm facing and their own levels of experience and style on the matter. And whether or not I can manage to not stand my ground. Not in this round, but let's find out about the next one. Round 
Nothing a ninja likes better than a predictable opponent. Alright. I wasn't expecting the jump, I admit. I really should have been, but I wasn't. You lose. I was planning to parry something. But not quite that. Of course, part of learning of this and learning to think about it is recognizing your opponent's patterns. This particular opponent likes to jump, likes to jump in a specific spacing, likes to set up that jump spacing. We just saw another example of it now. The question is, can I take advantage of this? The answer? Maybe. Of course, once I do, they're guaranteed to do something different. Maybe. Honestly, it's less of a guarantee than you might think. Unless you're used to this sort of thing, because, uh, let's admit it, dealing with your own muscle memory is always a question of its own when you're on offense like this. If there's something you're particularly... Ah, I couldn't get my virus off. If there's something you're particularly uh, in the habit of doing. Always somewhat important to remember to be careful about what habits you're forming, and how well you are able to adjust them when it comes to an opponent that does finally figure you out. Or things like that. But of course that variability comes with practice. Getting used to the situations where the thing you like to do or are learning to do does work and the situations where it doesn't. I have a very simple situation here, ultimately. Position myself, and neutral jump air to air, with stand, with, well, jump, medium punch. But that doesn't mean I'm necessarily ready to do it. I'll get him next time.
spacing there though with the walk back on the V skill. The president managed to find exactly the space where he could block and the thing would not hit him.
And back to the grind. Maybe a little more quieter this time as I try and put my focus to specific things. You know which things. But maybe not. We'll see what comes in. What happens. Thing is helpful in the corner too, knowing when they're going to bait your uppercut. down if your opponent is too. See, I didn't need to jump there. We both knew I was going to jump there. It wasn't wrong and it wasn't right. demonstrated by that last one there. Hmm? Caught it in time. The changeover, when he was ready to stop. 
Anyway. I forgot what I was going to say, sorry. Gonna have to put up with that. Ah, yes. I really do need to learn the thing I had just observed where I can go over that V-skill with the x Kaku. Kyaku. It's very specific timing and spacing. But if I can figure it out, it'll be helpful. Alright, and back to my Zaku practice, and I would say going into it with the um, particular priming to deal with that particular jump in that particular way, but we'll see what I manage. Priming oneself for certain things that only happen in certain spaces where you have other responses or expectations, timings too. Sometimes it can be done and sometimes it's just can't. You need more practice. You need evolutions, whatever the case may be. So let's see where I'm at today. I'm estimating 40% chance. Of course that depends on the setup and situations and all that being the same in the first place. Which we'll also find out, but I expect it. There we go. That's exactly what we were seeing in the other round. round two. So if we get the situation in the right place, it'll come up again. Which is normal for this sort of level. Where most opponents are not necessarily advanced enough to always be making plans around delaying, switching, or baiting their main tactic between sets. Sometimes, but not usually. Unfortunately, uh, guess that's not quite the, let's see, I think it was timing for that air-to-air. -air. Round one. Fight. Hello. Boop.
TP, come on man. Oh well. Anyway, if my air to air isn't working there, and uh, I believe that is the situation William has just advised me- Ooh. Regret. <laughs> well alright then. Has just advised me I need to backdash. Figure out what to do after the backdash is something that I'm only going to get extremely lucky with, at least in this specific match. Because we are down to the end. Unfortunately, you do only get so much time with each given opponent to try and learn their stuff. So, next time around, maybe. I can never forget that, regardless of whatever else you're training, whatever else is going on, the whole game is still there. Not going to get to get away with only working on the exact thing you want to, or maybe necessarily seeing exactly how to apply it to any particular situation. Now, given that this is mix and mash and we have been in this particular lounge for uh, quite some time, it would naturally be about time to switch to the other party members' lounges, but um, the main candidate for that appears to be full at the moment, so we're going to have to wait for a slot to open up if we want to do anything like that. For the moment, this lounge was not quite full, last I checked. Surely we'll see again. But if you want to join, you can search for... DeWolf, actually, is the creator of this three rounds first to two lounge with characters select on today. Fight yourself some Zeku, some Honda, some Nakali, and perhaps some Karin. Despite it being character select on, so far all of our current members are stable in terms of what character we're fighting with today. Round one. Fight. Alright, we do seem to have an open slot for the moment in the other lounge. So, at the end of this match, possibly just before the end of this match, possibly at the very beginning of the next one, depending on how I catch it. Well, there is your answer. Oh, there we go. I will be switching over.
All right, and here we are. Let's have a look at how Cosmic Wolf is doing today. Be a little different. Round two. reviewed my matchup notes for Sanki Morning. I mean, I really need to be more in the habit of, generally, but Sanki I know I have a full set of notes for. 
if not a fully well-practiced one. I don't have to fight that many Zangief, but when I do, I always regret taking so long to load my memories of how to do the matchup. Unfortunately, my problems are largely also a matter of training, learning the exact spacings and getting that remembered each time through, and just getting used to the structure of the matchup as the levels go on and on. Since, obviously, I don't necessarily have time to go through the entire matchup with every opponent on the rare occasions where I do get to face a Zangief. But hopefully today I'll get somewhere. I suppose it can be useful as well to practice the sort of thing I'm trying to do when other people are playing as well. Just by watching them and trying to keep track of when, for instance, Sakala or Galaxy Wolf are having consistent, variable, whatever impression of when their turn is, when how that's shifting and related matters. I suppose it will technically also prepare me for facing either of them myself, but uh, more so than that, it's all the same thing, really. And watching it in lower pressure situations, is certainly still watching it. And that can be very useful. Ah, the power of Zanyev. Alright, let's do this. Let's do this. 
Alright, chose the right V-Trigger. Now let's see if I can remember that I did so. Oh, right, Honda. Well, I wasn't paying enough attention, so... Purely a V-Reversal matchup, it seems. On the other hand, I suppose this is a different comparison to Mr. President. Definitely one more confident with his offense, it seems, and the use of that particular move. Alright, alright. Wasn't ready for the V-Trigger. Not being able to throw after that is really unusual and disconcerting to me. But that's part of the... I have to learn a different timing for... whose turn it is on this character versus... Like kick is godlike. Oops. <laughs> that was supposed to be an EX Mujin, which probably would have armor broke. Eh, uh, what are you gonna do? Alright then.
she wins. She wins. It's go time. All right, who have we this time? Personally, I'm hoping for Honda again. Failing that, Zangief. I suppose I could work with Rashid. Let's see what we got. Though, this time I'll pay attention before I select my V-Trigger. I, on the other hand, am predictable. At least lately. Some days I'm not. Today is not one of those days. Rainbow Mika. Mika. All right. Let's see what kind of Mika we have here. Okay, I forgot to actually look at which, uh, which Nadesco 
Did I scout? We were gonna get here. That's totally my bad. I was ready for the other one. I would have not gotten hit by the other one. But, uh, oops. not gonna kill, not by long shot. Indeed it is a long shot, that's more than a heavy punch. Now it's a heavy punch. But I've lost track of the thing that I intended to train on. So that's not entirely surprising. Right there. That was a perfect example of how not to do uh, the whole thing I've been talking about the whole stream. Oh. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't hit the ground. If I hit the ground, I would have been safe. Alright, that's fair. Alright, and there we go. This will also be the end of our stream. It is getting to be about that time. If you want to stop by, catch our next stream, you can come to our Dead or Alive lobby, most likely, actually, on Thursday, 60 times, same time, same place, 7pm US Eastern on this channel. Or if uh, Dead or Alive 6 is not your thing and you want the Street Fighter, We'll be back here on Monday, same time, same place, for either some more mix and mash, or maybe our usual mishmashing. Either way, very similar things, just slightly different lounge formats. And you can find these, obviously, on our Twitter, 2 underscore MK underscore FGC. And there you can keep up with whatever it is we're doing. We usually tweet around stream time if we're going to stream. Occasionally if we're having trouble or something's gone wrong, you'll find out there too. Otherwise, everything is on our YouTube archives and all of that, even after it goes past Twitch, which you can find at our website 2-mk.org, along with all of our bots for this game and other games. 
for getting in some training with particular characters in a more controlled or offline setting. And this has been Kanzuki Dynasty for Team 2MK. Good luck with your training, and good night, everyone. But if you want to join the post-show party, you can look for Omni Rabbit's stream. See you there. Maybe. Goodbye.